Welcome to the Photography Opinion Podcast. We discuss all things photo, video, and camera related. I'm Ben Lucas. And I'm Stuart Marlantis. And this is Photo Op. How you doing today, Stuart? Hey, doing well. Love to talk about some photo stuff. Let's talk about some photo stuff. So, um, a while back, we said we had a question from Nathan, and we never actually got around to that. So, um, we have a few other random questions. So, we are going to do kind of a, a mishmash of some Q and A stuff. Mm-hmm. So, let's just uh, before we dive in to just answering your questions. If you have a question, email us hello at photo dash op dot show. Or um, you can always, you know, just uh, leave a comment on the YouTube channel and I find questions that way as well. And the last thing is, please give this show a rating. Uh, If you rate on your platform of choice or on Apple Podcasts, then uh, that helps the show tremendously. So it is with viewers like you that uh, we can keep this going. So without further ado, uh, yeah, what what do we got? What's our question from Nathan? First, I'm going to say... photo dash op dot show i just renewed the uh domain for that the other day so uh We've happy one year of the year. photo, the photo op domain uh, so that's cool not a one year of the show we'll get to that later um but one, uh, year, this- one year since i registered the domain <laughs> i mean we're almost at 50 something episodes we're, we're getting, getting there. there we're getting there we'll, we're have, getting we'll there. have some sort of celebratory episode i think um so but yeah I- yeah, Nathan had a couple of questions, and then uh, I know I know that we had a couple other questions as well. So yeah, let's let's dive into answering your questions. Yeah, so thanks, uh, Nathan. First of all, for sending in your question, um, we always love to get to questions, and we are happy to answer yours. So you ask a few different things. Um, I'm gonna hopefully uh, pare this down a little bit. Um, thank you for your kind comments and everything. First of all, um, but one of the things is that he. Uh, Uh, he's getting at is he uses his cell phone as a remote control for his camera for uh, self portraits and and other uh, projects. And he uses it to um, get a closer look at the setup and the focus without um, bumping anything. Um, So one of the things he was looking at is picking up a dedicated monitor to see how much detail um, he can resolve with the monitor as reference for the project without uh, straining his eyes compared to the small um, cell phone screen. Um, He also goes on to talk about a projector and other things, but uh, what do you think about... Let's start with that one. Yeah, Yeah. we'll start with the monitor. What do you think about about a monitor instead of a cell phone for, um, for... projects have any well his, his camera's new and fancy uh yeah. i haven't been able to use my <laughs> cell phone as a remote for mine uh that would have been that would have been cool uh mm-hmm. i don't do self-portraits that often because they're hard you have a lot to set up um I'm going to start with a, a tip on self-portraits. Mm-hmm. So I have a studio stand-in that I have named Henry. It is a skull. It is just this plaster skull that I stick on a light stand. Uh, so that way I put its face where my face will be so I can get focus without having to be in the shot. And then I just need to make sure I hit my mark. So then I just slide Henry out and I move in. By the way, I named it Henry because Shakespeare, Henry, Macbeth, the skull. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> um, Not so Wilson. This, <laughs> no. <laughs> no so yeah. so that is um i mean that that would be fun too but i had a skull <clears throat> not a volleyball yeah, so uh that's the first tip um regardless i know you didn't ask but that just makes self-portraits easier okay mm-hmm. talking about monitors um way back in the day i did pick up a monitor because i was doing a lot of video work where i didn't have a flip out screen on my canon and i really needed to be able to it, it was just making life hard I needed a monitor. It had to happen. Um, highly recommended. Get a cheap monitor. Um, I'm not going to say what I paid for mine because prices have come down so much. They're better and cheaper now. Yes. Um, I don't know if you have any r- recent recommendations. Yeah. Um, my cat is certainly uh, chiming in with some of his own recommendations. <laughs> but uh, my uh, recommendation would probably be, uh, I can probably give you a single brand, actually. And that brand is Feel World. Um yeah, feel world, right? 
<laughs> um, so Feel World is a uh, a cheaper but still quite performant um, monitor brand. Uh, you can get some pretty fantastic performance out of you know a couple hundred bucks uh, worth of monitor from them. So. Um, say, considering you don't want to strain your eyes, I would go for something a little bit larger, uh, not like a five inch. I would do maybe like a seven inch or bigger if you can afford it. One of the things to keep in mind, certainly, and I don't know all of the situations you'd be using this monitor in, but is uh, the brightness. So the nits of mm -hmm. brightness output. If you're ever using this outside, you really need like... I would almost say 500 nits is minimum for outside use. I mean, you can get away with 300, but really the more nits is better. So I would go for a seven inch and then as, as a high resolution and as high brightness as you can get away with. And that will cover you for most of your needs. There are of course also monitors that do recording like the Atomos Ninja five and or Ninja V or I don't know if it's actually the fifth one. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, but there's that if you do if you're not shooting on too. a red, yeah. um, you know, if if you're just doing stills, mm -hmm. uh, th then it's those, not those are it's pretty pricey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are pretty pricey. So you're not really going to get all the extra features that you're paying for. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, so in previous episodes, when we've talked about uh, gear and we say, you know, there really is a point of diminishing returns of like, you're not really getting better. This mm -hmm. is one of those things of like more is better. Just just across we are not at a point where more is not better on mm -hmm. that yet uh because no you take that outside and uh even at full brightness with a sunshade like sometimes i have to get really close and i'm squinting and no so and you might think it's ridiculous to see knit values of like you know 1500 or 2000 on some fancier panels like that is actually well worth it that seems crazy like who would use that bright of a monitor but really me, you can me. i would yeah, i wish exactly. i had that <laughs> like you're trying uh, no, to overpower my, the sun so as bright mine as is get. really cheap and it is it is i wish it were brighter but um that's why i said like yeah it, it works great for me when i only use it in studio but yep. out, outside it just feel world no feel world for sure feel world. Or, there you go. or just buy a tv like if you're only going to use it in studio True. sometimes a little monitor isn't nearly as cool as literally buying a cheap large tv that you could put on a c stand and see your entire frame and a number of youtubers actually do that exact thing because or it's you could do what i do and you could hook up your camera to a 60 inch flat screen in the studio and use there that as a monitor so yeah you <laughs> might you might consider going the tv route um depending on your budget and depending on your specific needs but yeah feel world for portable ones um potentially tv for studio yeah. use um and actually for anyone who's familiar with my triple click photo booth um i actually have a tv that um i run as a monitor uh so that people can see their images larger mm -hmm. so Good stuff. yeah i i did the same thing and i think i paid like 100 130 bucks or something i just got the biggest largest cheapest tv i could find and like i didn't care about specs or features because like eh I, yep. It gets the job done. So, so um, that was just Nathan's first question. <laughs> that was that was so, question number one. Awesome. So okay, moving so, forward. Yeah, uh, the next one was: Do you have any thoughts or experience using projectors? Yeah. Um, and and there he specifically are... mentions using. Well, one he mentions using it as a monitor, actually, but two using it as a don't backdrop. use it as a monitor. Yeah, don't use as, it as, as a monitor. As soon as you set up your lights and stuff, it'll go washed yep. out and you can't see it. Yep. But what about as a backdrop? Um, as a backdrop, um, that is, I mean, that's how old movies were made. Mm -hmm. So you, you put, you put actors in a car and then you project the street behind them. And so, actually some newer movies, although they're not projectors this time, they're screens. The Mandalorian yeah, set The Mandalorian is, actually, is yeah. in a, it is in a quote virtual real set where mm -hmm. they're on a sound stage and the set moves around them according to predetermined and go watch the behind the scenes things it is it's really fascinating cool. but those are screens well, not projectors and they're very yes. high high brightness screens yeah nathan you can't afford the mandalorian set i'm sorry to say uh <laughs> you don't know nathan <laughs> i do know nathan actually uh, <laughs> you don't know his budget <laughs> maybe he wants to make a mandalorian <laughs> a God willing, more power to you. Uh, no, so oh, Nathan. So, by the way, if you do have that kind of budget for Mandalorian Studio, uh, can you hit me up, please? I'd can you, love can you to sponsor borrow it this sometime. podcast? Uh, <laughs> no, so uh, using projectors. That's that's how all movie, old movies were made. So mm -hmm. that is a completely legit uh, thing you can do. The important thing to remember um, is if you're doing it with stills, you can get away with it a little easier than if you're doing it with. Um, uh, video just because with video it looks weird like mm -hmm. it looks like an 
old movie. Yeah, um, you don't have parallax um, uh, mm-hmm. with pro- with flat projections like you do with actual 3D objects or really fancy. Right. Right. Yeah. So um, if you're doing it with photos, like it can turn out just fine. Make sure that you have really good separation between your foreground and your background. Make sure none of your lights or anything shadow from your actor are um, hitting that background um, and make sure your perspective is right because nothing kills the effect than putting up a projection and having a bad perspective. If you're just doing like fine art, abstract shapes and stuff, cool, go mm-hmm. for it. I've seen that where they even um, point it at the models and you can get all kinds of cool lighting and color effects. Like, buy, buy a projector, ha- have fun. Is there a technical um, spec that you should look out for? Um, as You know bright, more about that than I do. Uh, well, it's, it's less, kind of like the monitors, as bright, as high resolution, as high contrast mm-hmm. as you can afford. And definitely look at reviews of these when you buy this kind of stuff. There's lots of people that exhaustively test them. Um, you know, there's there's kind of a similar community around projectors as there is in the audiophile community. They will give you the real answers because um, lots of manufacturers like to to trump up their say their contrast is like a gazillion to one or whatever, and that's in not perfect actually true. lab constructed yeah. circumstances. Um, and a not lot of people in will, real world, yeah, exactly. And and tons of people test them and give you the actual spec. So definitely read reviews if you're going to buy one. Um, but the uh, the shorthand is. Definitely brightness is probably what I would prioritize over anything else and then probably contrast and then probably resolution in that order. Um, I would go at least 1080p if you can, 4K if you can afford um, beyond that point for a resolution. But yeah, pretty much more money equals better. <laughs> it's less about specs. So. Yeah, that's that's kind of how it goes. <laughs> and projectors are not cheap. I looked at getting one for the studio, but buying uh-huh. a sixty-inch flat screen was cheaper. Yeah, I mean you're you're looking at like a couple thousand bucks for a good projector minimum so so i mean there are cheap projectors that if you just want to play cool um your last question was uh is this gimmicky or is it a fad i will say like yeah it's been done but the same way that like using a ring light could be considered gimmicky don't do it for every single shot you know (laughs) do it do it once in a while and if you figure out new and creative and interesting ways to pull it off then good for you I mean, you could make it a fad. I wouldn't call it a fad because I don't actually see it that frequently. But if you do it in a really interesting way. I used to see it a lot. I used to see it a lot and it went away. So you could Mm -hmm. bring it back. Yeah. There you go. So if that's something you really want to pursue and you got some cool ways of doing it, then more power to you. But it's going to be tricky. You're going to have some setup for sure. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. Lots of testing. Okay, so uh, thank you for your email. Hopefully that answered your question. Um, Another fun one that we have today uh, comes from Israel. Uh, Do I have to use a watermark to hold on to the rights to my image, or can someone just use it? Um, And uh, the situation here was that someone took one of his images, and they just used it. And he said, hey, you can't use that. And they said, well, you didn't put a watermark on it, so therefore I'm allowed to use it because that's how copyright works. And then he said, is there a way I can get this taken down from Instagram? I'm going to start with that one first. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can. So what you are um, what you need to do in the situation, or, or what it's termed legally, is a DMCA claim, um, which is basically, it's the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. It doesn't really matter. The name doesn't really matter. But basically, it's, a, it's an act that gives you um, the legal right to remove things online that re- infringe on your copyright. And uh, we will link a form, the actual Instagram form for filing a DMCA claim. And it'll ask you, are you worried about somebody who has a who's infringing on a trademark or a copyright? And you can click on that and then you can go through their form and uh, get yeah. the content removed. So the answer so, is yes, it's built in. Instagram legally has to provide that service. They do. So, you're so we uh, link specifically to the Instagram one in the show notes. However, mm-hmm. uh, DMCA is uh, a wide internet term, not an mm-hmm. Instagram term. So every website should theoretically be able to have a takedown. Um, you can hire yes. people to do DMCA takedowns. Um, if you do not know who to hire and do not have a lawyer, um, I actually do have a recommendation. I believe it is called uh, Pixie. Oh, um, you mean the image service? Yeah. Yeah, it's called Pixie. It is spelled P-I-X-I. 
S Y um, pick C. Mm-hmm. So um, this is a service that's really interesting. Um, you can um, point it towards your website or some other repertoire where you keep your images. Mm-hmm. So um, if it's not on your website uh, and you want to use this service, you can actually upload photos privately maybe so that they can't be like scanned by Google, but uh, that this website will still look at them and kind of scrape and find them and what it does is it is a reverse image search so it will search the entire internet for your images and then it will say here you go we found um your image here here and here and one of them might be like oh actually no i wrote the tutorial for that website a long time ago they're allowed to use that image and you can click approved and you can say hey that hot air balloon company in australia You did not have the rights to use my wedding image for your promotion and you can start a claim um, and you only have to pay them uh, if they actually um, get you a settlement for some company using it. Um, That case ended with the website taking down my image and never paid me. So cool. But I also didn't have to do anything. It was a couple clicks of work to protect my images Um, that other than them taking a commission from settlements, uh, you do pay for DMCA takedowns. So it's not free from them, mm-hmm. but uh, it makes it easy. Yeah, you're really paying them to make it easy. Uh, you can pretty much for any platform of choice, you can uh, search you know, DMCA takedown or DMCA claim, insert your social media platform of choice, mm-hmm. and they will have a form somewhere that you can fill out um, and, and file it yourself. But yeah, Pixie makes it a lot easier for some cash. Hashtag not sponsored. No, <laughs> no, definitely not. Uh, no, but but uh, <laughs> we'll link to that uh, down as well. Okay. Um, okay, so so let's 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 get into copyright for a second here. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have another question that is not going to make it. We can turn that into a future episode. Uh, how to deal with upset clients. So. If you wanna if you wanna listen to the next episode, that's what we'll be talking about. <laughs> um, uh, we're, we're not ignoring your question, but no, I, I, I just want to talk about copyright here for a second because, mm-hmm. uh, so let's, let's go back to the original question. Uh, do I have to use a watermark to keep my images? No, no, no that's not how any of this no. works. That is wrong on so many levels. Uh, so how copyright works is as a creator, the second you press the button, uh, you own the image and the copyright. That's that's it. Yep. So copyright like, is granted at creation. Yeah. So so there are two kind of famous examples of this with people getting kind of all up in arms. The first one is Annie Leibovitz. They say, well, her team did all the lighting, and then they did all of this, and then her editors did all the editing, but she's the one who pressed the button, so it's her work. Well, yeah. Also, she paid all of those people, mm-hmm. so. That that might be a conversation for another day. The other one that comes up is the is the monkey selfie. Do you remember this? <laughs> yeah, this was great. <laughs> um, where PETA got real mad because the monkey. They said no, the photographer doesn't own the copyright. The monkey did because the monkey clicked the button. Mm-hmm. Okay, but a monkey's not a person. To be fair, and... I kind of wish the monkey was granted the copyright on that. <laughs> oh, that. <laughs> Just, that would have just been Google just monkey amazing. selfie if you want to hear more about this story. This, this is great. But, no, but that's um, what, that was one where I was like, "Yeah, I understand, but it's less fun that way." <laughs> so, so the yeah, this this court case was um, a photographer set up a remote camera that could be um, triggered, mm-hmm. and so the monkey triggered the camera. And technically, people are claiming he didn't trigger it, but he did all of the work and the setup, and he's the one who set up the remote triggering. And anyway, yeah. so. It's his image. He's the one who posted it. He's the one who did everything. Uh, mm-hmm. He's the only human in the equation who can claim the copyright for that image. Um, Correct. That's, yeah, the, the only that's way a long you're, story. You're not holding the copyright to an image that you shoot is like if you sell it or uh, relinquish it to somebody else, um, hopefully with a lots of actually legally binding paperwork. Yeah. So, so let's talk about um, owning the copyright. Uh, relinquishing the copyright and licensing because these are all Mm -hmm. completely different so if you uh created the image and you own the copyright then it is your image Mm -hmm. um one of the things that you might need 
are uh, releases. So if you shoot um, for on a specific property, you might need property releases. If you shoot a piece of art, you will need a uh, release from the artist. If you have any uh, people and you're not in a public space, you will need model releases. Mm -hmm. So you will; those are permission from all of the things saying that you were allowed to take that photo. Um, but once you have all of those permissions and you've taken that photo, that is just your photo. No one is allowed to, um, you know, take it from you. Um, the giving up copyright is if you do work for hire or sell the copyright. So mm -hmm. work for hire is the actual uh, legal term for it. And what that means is... Um, it, I pay you a hundred dollars work for hire. That means everything you do, I own. Mm -hmm. So, um, a lot of times, uh, whenever all my friends who work for like Microsoft and Amazon and all these big tech companies, they want to work on side projects, but they're kind of holding the seed of the idea and they're waiting until they no longer work for that company mm -hmm. because the, it is in their contract that anything they do while employed is work for hire, including side projects. So that Amazon or Microsoft or whatever would own the thing that they're like their side hustle. And, and by the way, this this is especially messy. Um, there are a lot of people that do side projects and get away with it or people that are like, well, I didn't do them on the clock and they legally are covered depending on their contract. Like this is, uh, this is very if, contract if you work for, specific. If you work for a company and you're and you're doing creative work outside of that company, one certainly don't do it on the clock because um, yeah, they for sure will will have you over a barrel there. But two, read your contract um, ideally before you sign it, but read your contract yeah. and, and um, make sure you also know if you're coming it. to this show for legal advice instead of a lawyer. We're not doing lawyers. something wrong. Go, go <laughs> talk to a lawyer. Um, no. So, so owning, so work for hire, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, the easiest example of this is if I do a photo shoot for, let's say a real estate agent. Okay. Uh, the real estate agent could say, I need it to be work for hire, which means that I am leaving everything at the door. I cannot use anything any of those images online in my own promotional material um i can't sell them as stock photos i can't do anything with it uh it is not my photo anymore it is their photo because it was a work for hire um the difference here is uh some clients will say hey i need to have the images what they're not asking for is copyright. What they are asking for is license. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I give all of my headshot clients, whether it's actors or real estate agents or lawyers, um, is that I am owning the copyright. Because if I didn't own the copyright, I wouldn't be able to post it on Facebook and say I took your photo. I wouldn't be able to put it on my website and use it in my portfolio. It, it wouldn't be my photo. I wouldn't be allowed to do that. So I have to own the copyright for the, the marketing purposes, um, even if I'm a ha also signing a clause saying this photo will never be sold as stock. This attorney will never show up on an ad for Viagra, like that kind of thing. Um, but but I need to own that copyright and they have a license to use for X, Y, Z. Um, and licensing is all different. But basically, uh, when you're letting someone use the photo, you're not giving them the copyright. You are giving them a license and the license is going to be specifically defined for what they can or cannot do with it. Mm -hmm. um, for for the all the commercial people, like they're allowed to put it on their business and their website and their business cards and like they don't have to attribute anything to me and that's fine. That's their license that they're paying for. Um, family photos, it, uh, technically says like you have to like, uh, credit me as the photographer, but you know, people don't and whatever it's, you have to pick your battles a little bit with that stuff. Yeah. Exactly. But, uh, you know, also if people love working with me. They're going to want to say, Hey, this guy's great. So there's that too. Um, but then they have a license to, you know, take that photo to Costco and get it printed on a mug. I don't care. Like mm -hmm. that's fine. They have the license to do that. Um, where this gets a little bit trickier is when you upload a, f a photo to a website, the website's terms of service uh, and every website's a little bit different, but basically what it says is once you've uploaded it, people are allowed to share it, but it doesn't mean that 
it doesn't mean that they own the copyright, but then there's some sneaky ones that so, say you do. So yeah, so it, it depends. So most social media, you you retain the copyright for anything you upload to it. They can, they, they the social media they, company yeah. can distribute it. They have a license to use it. But they have a license um, to the, use the it. The other thing I've seen a little users tricky. Do not. Yeah. The other thing I've seen that's tricky is like um, when you do uh, photo contests. Mm -hmm. And they say, we own the copyright to a photo you upload. I've seen that before. That is some sneaky, shady yeah, don't, crap right don't there. Don't, no, 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 contests. don't do that. Yeah. Um, so, so there is a little bit of this weird gray area. It's not gray. It's just shady. And they try mm -hmm. and kind of like sneak things and, in. And a lot of people don't know the law. So like they, they don't, they will not say, at all. Like they'll post stuff and say copyright not intended. I don't care. You that doesn't matter if you intended or not. You violated copyright. I could sue you legally right now. You better take it down. Like, yeah. Right. That that kind of. I that see that on language. YouTube all the time. Yeah, They're like kind of, not mine. Yeah. But oh, I'm music, sharing it. Uh, music you, from X Y Z artist copyright not intended. So <laughs> that yeah, doesn't mean the, anything. <laughs> um. When so so laws may have changed, but uh, from the age of like. 10 or some 12 i don't know whenever i first got on the internet the very first thing my dad who is an attorney by the way uh drilled into my brain is that uh copyright infringement comes with a quarter million dollar penalty years in jail and it's per thing so uh you remember when napster was a thing yeah <laughs> <laughs> limewire or we just dated ourselves I don't look that old, but yeah, I'm back in the LimeWire days, yo. So um, it is per thing. So technically, per song you illegally download is they. So these rack over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. Well, the same thing can be said for images. Yep. So by stealing other images, you can rack up hefty fines. So one, don't steal other people's work. Don't do it. Mm -hmm. um, but if someone steals your work, like. Yeah, this is serious. They mm -hmm. can't do that. Yep. And then there will there are other people that will claim like fair use, but fair use That's not is what fair use both is. very specific <laughs> and very nebulous. Yeah. So the very specific part is it has to be like critique. It um that needs to expand upon the original. It can't be a copy of the original. It has to change or alter it. It needs to be uh like educational. There are all these different things that and this isn't an episode on fair use, but there are all these different things that kind of constitute that mm -hmm. so this person taking your image just because you post on instagram not fair use they have absolutely no ground to stand on let's talk about watermarks i hate them they suck yep. and yes i did use to use them i still kind of technically use them sometimes but they've gotten way smaller and less noticeable mm -hmm. and it's getting increasingly easy to to photoshop them out so yeah like it, it's it's an yeah. arms race i used and, to have a really yeah. big watermark that looks snazzy and oh i don't want to show it to you because it looks so bad <laughs> it is it is so 2000s um and then and then it got smaller and it got a little more refined but it was still like in the middle of the image thinking like oh people aren't gonna but they absolutely did photoshop it out i'm like oh mm -hmm. there's just stealing my stuff but the other thing too is it's just really annoying to yep. look at i don't want to see this beautiful image and go oh that's amazing and then see just this big gaudy whatever right in the middle of the screen if you're gonna do it put it on the bottom bottom corner get it out of the way people are gonna crop it or photoshop it anyway so d that's not really a deterrent mm -hmm. um and uh i did get another similar question from someone saying um tonya Thank you for your question, Tonya. Uh, it kind of segues in from the last one. But uh, Tonya said um, a similar thing about watermarks. Um, they had a client post unedited proofs from their photo shoot um, to social media. And they're like, hey, you're not allowed to do that. Also, they look bad. I haven't edited them yet. These were for you to pick which ones you want me to lo make look pretty. Um, Wait, and Tonya you basically. Why did proofs? <laughs> <laughs> yeah and tony basically said like hey what do i do so so that was your question thank you for sending in your question anyway um so in that circumstance a huge part of that is client education mm -hmm. tell them hey here is the before here is the after i'm not gonna add the special sauce to all of these you i'm waiting for you to pick if that mm -hmm. is genuinely what it is um the other option is don't show them anything that doesn't you're not willing to for them to post obviously if they're going to add a bunch of filters and make it look heinously terrible i've had that happen to me as well it hurts me deep to my soul 
but it happens occasionally. Mm -hmm. Um, you, you can't stop that. But client education is the biggest thing there. But, um, in terms of like, people are saying like, oh, put a big, like low opacity watermark and ruin the whole photo when you give them proofs. Don't do that. That's, that's bad. It hurts mm -hmm. and they don't like looking at it. Just, um, tr try to do in-person sales if you can. I know COVID makes that hard. Uh, do low res proof in instead of high res proofs. Client education. Yeah. No, they still might post the low res proofs. So it, they yeah. they'll still do it. Yeah. But it'll help. It'll help. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no. So to answer y the new question, um, don't put a huge gaudy watermark. You can maybe put a low watermark in the bottom corner or say like preview image only or something. But uh, man, it just. Just put, put a don't big, ruin uh, your images like that. You want your client to buy confidential. <laughs> yeah. You want your client to buy the image and they will buy the image if it looks nice. And a lot of people yeah. don't, it's like when you're shopping for a house and you walk in and you're like, mm, I don't know if this house is going to work. This room is a weird color of tan paint. <laughs> But a lot of people don't have the foresight to be able to envision what that looks like. And when you put a big, ugly watermark on top of it, they're like, nah, I hate that image. I don't know what it is. I know what it is. It's your watermark sucks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, posting on Instagram, going back to Israel's question. Uh, no, they're not allowed to take your images. Uh, yes, you absolutely can get it taken down. And you own the copyright and you're well within your rights. That person is a douchebag who does not know law. I'm sorry you had to have that fight. To answer Tanya's question, client education. Mm -hmm. um, don't put a big ugly watermark because uh, it makes it ugly. Why would you want to make ugly stuff? We make pretty stuff. That's what we do. And and Israel, one more comment really quick. Um, if, if this person says that because it's on social media, that means that they can share it, um, that is a load of crap as well. Um, that is not the case. Uh, especially on Instagram, um, you, I mean, I don't know, I can't cover every social media platform, but you uh, sharing it does not mean re mean re-uploading it. Like if they want to share it using the share function, okay, they can do that, but they can't just re-upload your work. Um, that is not what that, that means. And mm -hmm. um, they are hundred percent not in the right. Uh, they, they do not have any license just because it's in, it's in public. A lot of people say that too, like, oh, it must be public domain because you shared it with the public. Not what no, public domain that's means. That's not what public domain means. So uh, we're, I'm just trying to cover as many weasel words that this person might use to argue with you. Oh, um, anything so they say is likely wrong, almost certainly wrong, and you have the copyright. So tell them to remove it or you will file a DMCA claim and hopefully they will just remove it or you can just go with the DMCA claim and Instagram will remove it for you. So um, cool. Yeah. I think we're done with this episode because my <laughs> eyes are rolling so hard. It's physically painful. Yep. What, what do you think? I think I think we're done. Yes. Thank you cool. all for your questions. Uh, as we said before, send in more on comments on our videos or uh, at uh, hello at photo dash op dot show. And we love to do these. So we'd be happy to answer your questions in a future, future episode. <laughs> Thanks. so much Absolutely. For listening. And uh, stay tuned next time. We will be talking about how to uh, deal with upset clients. So we'll see you next week with that one. See you then. Just hit my mic. I shouldn't do that. I should really stop doing this. If you have questions or ideas for future episodes, you can email us at hello at photo dash op dot show. Watch us on Ben's YouTube channel at Nom Creative. As in Om Nom Nom. Share this with a friend and you can listen to Photo Op anywhere podcasts are sold. Or downloaded. Because it's free.